Y'all are not going to believe this. I want to tell you about a first date that I had with a guy uh, a couple of months ago, a coffee date. And then I'm going to tell you what happened on the date last night. A couple of months ago on a dating app, I met a guy, we talked, um, conversation was reasonable, nothing to get it all worked up and excited about. He invited me out. He couldn't quite make up his mind, dinner, lunch. He was like, um, let's this, that, and went on for a couple of days of that, that sort of back and forth, trying to sort it out. I'm like, this can't be that big of a damn decision, you know, pick a place a day. But anyway, we finally settled on a coffee date. We went and it was the coffee date was going to be inside the bookstore so um i got there it's a little tiny space too and i got there first on the coffee date so instead of me standing there looking crazy i went ahead and ordered my own coffee and as soon as i paid for my coffee he popped up behind me said hi and introduced himself i said great and he got uh he he had already he already had a cold drink a tea or something in a cup with a straw from that the coffee shop so he had been there obviously before me I just assumed that he wandered over there by the books that sort of thing and was looking at things waiting for me to arrive and I didn't think anything of me paying for my own coffee because of the circumstances because I made the assumption that he was over there in the bookstore wandering around with his glass of tea or whatever soda whatever it was he had in that cup and that he just didn't see me come in. And when, as soon as he saw me at the counter, he did come, uh, uh, you know, right over there to me. But by then I'd already paid for my coffee. I didn't think anything of it, okay? I didn't think anything of it, you know? Cause I'm not a stickler about, you know, a coffee mm -hmm. date, who pays, that sort of thing. If we had both walked up to that counter together and he, step aside for me to pay for my own, I would have noticed that. But in this case, because of those circumstances, I did not pay close attention. It was not we figure, we a got big that. deal. It's not a big deal. We it should got that. have been. Because let me tell you what happened. Now, I haven't heard from this guy. I mean, I have heard from him a couple of texts um, over the past two months, but no steady communication, anything like that. And then the first of the week, I did hear from him, and he invited me out. And here's how the date went. Back to why the paying for the coffee is important. Y'all are not going to believe this. Okay, I don't want to hear none of y'all complaining about a bad date, because I, I win this week, okay? Here's what happened. So the first of the week, I heard from several guys that I hadn't heard from in a while. And I went out last night with one of them who I have been out on a coffee date with. And he was really busy with his job and all that kind of stuff. And, and we did have a fair and decent conversation during the coffee date, but it's been two months. And, and I really, I mean, I've gotten a text every once in a while from him, but not any real communication. And he didn't ask me out again. And I didn't really make an effort pursue him in any way either. So it, it just, you know, not good or bad, just kind of neutral. Nah. And well, so we went out, he invited me to go to dinner. So we met at the restaurant. And he had texted me and said, wait for me at the door if you get there before me. And I said, okay. So I did get there she about three minutes detail. before him. The girl had asked me how many in your party. I said two, but I'm going to wait for my friend. I don't want to be seated just yet. Because he'd asked me, right? So that's fine. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to wait for him at, in the area right there at the entrance. So he gets there and we kind of, oh, hi. And he kind of half shoulder hugs, you know. Oh, good to see you again. You know, um, looking forward to talking with you and catching up. Not great. The girl says... Uh, how many the two and I say yeah and he interrupts and says no we got an order already waiting for us it's a to-go order so she says oh what's the last name he, she goes and gets it and she says it's already been paid right because he obviously paid over the phone I guess and we get and he's got those I don't know what we're doing I don't know I mean maybe we're taking something back to his grandpa you know I don't I don't know what the hell we're doing and so we grandpa. step outside and I said what are we doing 
And he said, oh, he says, come here, I wanna show you my new truck. So we walk over to his new truck and he tells me all about it. This, that, it's got this, that, and, da, 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 and the good deal he got on it and how much it cost and all that. So like, great, and he said, it, it's got four wheel drive. Nice, and fabulous, a big four door truck, fabulous. Okay, so I'm still thinking, what the hell are we doing with these boxes of food, right? He says, come here. He says, you'll like this. And he opens the passenger door. He says, get in. So I'm thinking, well, maybe we're going somewhere. Maybe he's planned a romantic picnic or something. I, I don't know. I'm still thinking positive. And I get in the passenger seat, and he starts telling me more about all the buttons and the gadgets and the screen and the this and that in the truck. And then he says, oh, he says, they probably didn't give us any. He said, so get right there in the glove box. So I open the big glove box and there is a whole pile of like to-go forks and spoons that are in the little plastic wrappers with the napkin. And I look at him and I said, what are we doing? He said, oh, and he, now, by now on the big console in the front of the truck, you know, he's got the two boxes out and he's ripped the plastic bag off and he's handed me one. I said, what are we doing? He says, well, he said, I thought we could sit right here. He said, listen to the radio and talk. I said, they have a the music inside too, you know, in the overhead speaker. I said, is there a reason you, we're, what, are we going somewhere? And I'm not making sense because I'm having trouble getting a whole sentence. Are we going, they have music. I mean, <laughs> just all these thoughts in my head, like make this make sense. And so he says, no, he says, I just thought maybe you'd like to see my new truck. I've seen an effing truck before. You know, <laughs> he picked me up in the, in, uh, in the, you know, the, huh? Huh? And I said, uh, well, it's a very nice truck. I said, do you want to eat here? And you are, and he got us two wraps, the sandwich wraps, you know, the chicken wrap. And he said, I told him to put extra ranch in there. Most people like ranch with theirs. Huh? I said, you want us to eat dinner here in your truck? <laughs> I like how she said, Yeah, huh? he said, I like eating in here. He said, because I got the big console here. And I said, okay. So I didn't bite at any of this sandwich at all, right? I'm just looking at him, and he's still talking about his truck. And I just thought, what in the hell? So I, after watching him eat, like he was totally oblivious that I'm sitting there going, what? <laughs> And he, I finally spoke up and I said, did you invite me out to eat in your truck? He said, well, you make it sound like it's not fun. I said, because it's not. And he said, well, I said, I, I don't, I, he said, well, you don't eat and drive or eat in your car? I said, no, I don't actually. I said, I barely drink a, you know, a iced tea or something when I'm driving. I'm not eating a burger on the go all the time. No, all the time. I, I'm not accustomed <laughs> to eating in my car. I said, why didn't you want to sit inside? He said, they all, he said, those servers and waitresses in there, they always expect like $10. <laughs> I folded that little box shut with the little front of it and I sat it there. I said, well, I said, I wouldn't want you to, um, you know, suffer any hardships financially because you took me out to eat. I said, so here, you save this one. I haven't touched it. You can have that for lunch tomorrow. And he said, what? I opened the truck door. I walked over to my car. I got my little purse. I got my, oh my God. I got in my car and I drove off. What the F? <laughs> Speaking of going to work, I gotta go. Uh, but I won't hear none of y'all complaining about a bad day. I win this <laughs> week, and the week ain't even over yet. What to do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today we back with another lit video. We back in the confessional. Yes, we staying lit, big dog. Hey, shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my homeboy, Lucky Wheels and Deals. Check out his YouTube channel, man. He keeps it lit over there. Make sure y'all check out Opulent Sense. If y'all didn't hear me striking up this bad baby, it smells so good. And they long lasting candles, but don't burn them for over four hours. I don't know, that's just instructions. I don't know why. I, I don't, uh, one time I left it over, burning overnight, nothing happened. Like, it nothing exploded. So I don't know why it says don't leave it burning for more than four hours. But anyway, 
had that busted, I would still have a better day than old Dolly here, man. Dolly just can't catch a break. She went on a date with one of the cheapest men in history, okay? <laughs> if you can think of all the cheap men in history on TV, this this is where he got his from. He she got she went on a date with Archie Bunker, okay? <laughs> she went on a date with the dad from <laughs> from Everybody Hates Chris. <laughs> like, oh, oh man, he said he don't want to pay ten dollars for a tip. Let me just put it like this. So, even when you look at uh, a receipt nowadays, it tells you about how much ten percent, fifteen percent. 20%, 22%, 25%. Um, I recently went out. I tipped more than uh, 25%. Um, then I, we went out for my dad's birthday. I tipped. Well, I tipped my portion. And I'm sure my sisters and brothers tipped their own. But, uh, you know, we, we tipped handsomely. Uh, we did get good service, so it was pretty... It was pretty, the food was terrible, but it was, it, it, uh, the waitress was cool. Wait, wait, the waiter. Um, but also I went to a restaurant. I'm not going to name the restaurant because I'm not giving them no game. But if you ever in Fort Worth hit me up, I'll tell you some good ones. Uh, but I went to a restaurant with some fam or some friends. And, uh, yeah, that restaurant was delicious. The waiter was amazing. Kept the drinks flowing, kept the water full, you know, the tip that he got, it was it was well deserved. So, um, but then you have those restaurants where the waiter, you just be like, man, they suck. But do you still want to tip when they are terrible? So I know people that don't, or they'll give them the bare minimum. The bare minimum. I say give them the bare minimum, but what I don't understand is why do restaurants pay these people so little and expect them to make money based on their service, which makes a lot of people do better service. But some people have bad days. Some people just have bad attitudes. Well, when you have that type of person... Of course, they're going to get low tips all day. They're going to have a bad attitude with everybody. They might get a few complaints. And then they're going to be mad because they had a they had an off day. So I don't, like, tipping shouldn't be necessary. We should do it. But the people who work in those jobs shouldn't have to rely solely on tips. Because, but then, again, when they do get tips, if they have three or four tables an hour, and they're making about forty dollars per table. Then the, every hour that they have a table and they get a new couple set, and if they got four tables, that's at least a hundred and sixty dollars an hour, which could be for a good night. Man, some of these restaurants they be having shared tips, um, where everybody puts their stuff in a pot and they split it up. But then that's where you get where somebody. If a person's having a bad day, they bring in low tips, and you know, so you 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 basically making up for their tips. So you think, oh man, I'm hitting good tonight. I hope everybody else is hitting good tonight. And you look at so and so's tips, and you be like, what were you doing? Yeah, there, there you have it. But anyway, Dolly Day is just having a a, a horrible experience on date naps. I wish we'd get some guys in my comments. I, I see a few guys. They be like, oh, she looks nice. They just want to clap her cheeks because she's a full-figured, uh, voluptuous white woman, okay? And the white women with these type of haircuts tend to like black men more than likely. You know what I'm saying? So, it's been guys in there talking about they want to, you know what I'm saying, clap Miss Dolly's cheeks, okay, Dolly? I think... I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure the guy that you dated, but it seems to me. It seems to me that he was either a black country guy, or just a cheap, cheap white redneck. Okay, I'm not sure on your taste of men, but but I do believe 
you tend to date all over the place. You don't have a preference. You just want a nice salt and pepper gentleman. Okay? And when you look at their profiles, you see their like, what they like and dislike, and that's where you first judge them on. Until they invite you on a coffee date and let you pay for your own drink. See, he didn't just let you pay for your own drink. This is why you was making so much of a point of that. He sat back in the cut, let you order your drink and start to pay for it, and then he walked up on you. Now, had he walked up on you and said, hey, don't worry about this, I got this, he would have automatically got the draws. And when I talk about draws, I mean big draws, big granny draws. I don't see Dolly Day wearing a thong. But if she does, that big old ass, big, big old white ass would probably look good in some boy shorts, okay? I'm just saying, don't judge me. I'm just thinking about all them. All these older men who in my comments, they're ready to clap Dolly's cheeks. Dolly, you going after the wrong man, Dolly. I think you need to stay off the app, Dolly. You need to meet a real man in real life. Like, like I said, start going out in uh seniors groups. Stop stop meeting these people off the apps. Um, I think the people on the apps have a hard enough time trying to find love. But y'all old school. Y'all know how to talk to each other. Go to bingo. Go to um go to the YMCA. Okay? Join an aerobics class. Dolly, we gotta stop acting brand new with this dating scene. Anyway. Everyday people, let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace. <laughs>